Welcome to Desk Geek. It is Christmas time again around here, and we have the DBX by Harman 286S mic preamp processor. All the mic processing you need. So this is a mic preamp compressor, de-esser, spectral enhancer, and expander gate. It is a very cool piece to add to our audio for our channel. And we will be connecting this to the Steinberg UR22. And this is what you can expect when you open the box. You've got your little inserts. You have a very nice manual actually here that walks you through all of the settings and even has recommended settings for you uh, to utilize for each of the different uses you may have, whether using instruments, doing vocals, etc. This is an always on device, so once you plug in the power, it will always stay on, much like the UR22 does, and this will interface directly with that. So the UR22 will be our USB interface to our computer, and everything will essentially run through here and allow us to do our compression and uh, mixer settings right through this device versus trying to have to post edit afterwards which is really really cool this also has phantom power so you can power your mic through it just like the UR22 had so it's really a perfect complement to that device I've seen others utilize the Scarlett USB interface along with this and had great results as well so this is a really nice piece I was able to pick one up for about hundred and forty dollars on sale on eBay and it was a open box as you can see it looks pretty new uh, so we always like to save money around here but normally if you were to pay full price for this it would be about 200 bucks now let's take a look at this beautiful piece of machinery here so we have lots of knobs and we love knobs we love little controls and buttons and anything that we can push and make us look like we know what we're doing I'm not an expert with this but I plan to have a lot of fun and I've been geeking out on the audio stuff more and more so as always I would love to hear from my experts out there uh, on YouTube on some ways that I can get the most out of this device if you have experience in that field and show you what we have here. So we have our output uh, gain level, we have our expander gate, our enhancer, our de-esser, our compressor, and of course you have a nice gain reduction dB meter here. We have our process bypass, so you can bypass all this section here and our 80 hertz high pass, our phantom power, and our level meter, as well as our line meter. And the dials are really nice. They kind of have a rubbery coating on them, and they have a lot of clicky movement. You can't hear it, but it clicks every time you move a notch up, so you can get very, very precise. On the back here, what you would expect, we have our output line. Uh, looks like a uh, fourth inch. Uh, connectors there and our XLR connection for our mic input and that's it and you've got your power plug there at 15 watts so it uses the same kind of plug that you would use in the back of looks like a power supply almost like a computer power supply plug so that's it I'm gonna go ahead and get this hooked up I'm very excited to see the results and we will see what we can get in there and break talk to you soon so here's where I'm going to plug in the DBX286S to the Steinberg. So obviously I've got to power off the Steinberg and then I'll show you some of those connections. But I won't need the splitter anymore. So that actually works out because the software that I was using wouldn't allow for a stereo uh, or mono connection. And the new software that I'm using does allow for a mono connection. So it won't matter having that splitter there for stereo or not. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over and get ready to connect it. So the first thing we're going to do is power this off. And this is an always on device as I mentioned on my review of the Steinberg. And we're going to get ready to put this underneath and I'll put the Steinberg on top. But first, we're going to go ahead and remove the splitter here. And my mic will now be going directly into the DBX device. It won't be plugged into the UR22. So 
So the mic will obviously plug directly into the mic input on this DBX here. You can see it's got a nice push button release here. And then our we'll use a connector cable to connect from the output here into our main line on our UR22. So these are two males. You've got the one fourth inch plug and the XLR connector there. And that will allow us to interface those two devices. That cable does not come with this, so you will need to buy that separately. So I'm going to go ahead and move my mic. And oh, it's starting to look real advanced here, like I almost know what I'm doing. Don't let that fool you. So we'll go ahead and connect here. And this will go into the back of the DVX, which I will show you, into the output section there, and our mic will now connect into that mic output here on the back of the device, so we can go ahead and do that. Alright, so we're plugged in, so now all we need is power, and then we can plug both devices in, and I think the power is pretty self-explanatory. Plug it in the device, plug it into the wall. Alright, so what we have here is a white blinking light from the USB for the Steinberg. And I'm thinking when I unplugged it, it just is not able to reconnect itself to Windows so I'm going to restart my computer and see if that helps uh, I've seen that on the forums as a recommendation because it should be getting the same amount of power it shouldn't need any more power it's not really driving the 286s so there shouldn't be a problem here I can hear audio from the mic uh, with the 286s but the USB on the Steinberg is blinking which means I can't get the interface to work on the computer but I can certainly hear it through the headphones that are plugged directly into the UR22 and some of the sound is just so amplified and different obviously I've got to play with the uh, settings on the 286S but already I can tell there's going to be a major difference if I can get the settings right so I will keep working on this and I will let you know where we land but wanted to mention that in case you run into a similar problem and that resolved the issue you can see here that the USB light had stopped blinking for a moment and now it's blinking again that we've gotten into Windows but it's gone solid so it's acquired and I should be able to now select it on my computer and we should be good to go so so far everything's working and like I said I can hear myself perfectly through the mic so now it's time to play with the settings which should be a lot of fun because there's so many knobs and blinky light things welcome back I am just so excited. You're hearing me through the 286S right now, and I absolutely love it. I know there are probably better settings that I can that I can do and adjust and play with, but that's really the joy of this. I wanted to show you what I did to set this up, and of course, if there's any audio experts watching, I would love to get your opinion on the audio and maybe some adjustments that I can make to make to improve it even more. Uh, but this is what I learned and I wanted to share it with you. So if you've watched my other videos on the equipment that I use for my YouTube channel, then this is an addition that I've added to the UR22. And it, so far, I'm really liking the results. So let's start from the left to right. If you look on the far left over here, the first knob next to the DBX logo, that's our mic gain knob. We don't want this going into yellow while we're talking. We want it to be green. So your first two LEDs there next to that are green, and then you have a yellow and a red. So you want to stay within the green. And it can be difficult if you have moments where you're shouting to adjust it so that you've got kind of the two greens each time or whatnot, but you can play with that. But my suggestion if you're using a audio interface like a USB interface is to take the gain on the interface itself, the UR22, and set it basically to zero and then put the gain on the DBX to zero and then slowly raise them up together until you can find the right range and that way you don't end up damaging your equipment because if you have one set too high and the other one set too high then you can end up 
uh, damaging your mic, etc. So my UR22 is about at the middle gain. And then this DBX, as you can see, is also right about the middle. And that's been the sweet spot for me. Uh, I may try to adjust that later, but so far it's pretty good. Right next to that, you're going to see a 48 volt phantom power button. And it's just a little clicky button you could click on and off. And that, of course, provides that phantom power to your condenser mic. If you have a condenser mic like I do, I use the AT2020. And so I need that phantom power. And if you're running straight through the UR22 like I used to, I would have the phantom power on on that but you uh, to for the mic but I need that phantom power also for the DBX if I turn the phantom power off on the UR22 it does not feed enough signal through to the DBX so both of them have to have the phantom power on uh, at least in my testing for it to work so the next one is the 80 Hertz bypass which will filter out noises less than 80 Hertz such as wind low hum noises etc and you can experiment with just pushing this off and on to see what's best depending on your environment. And the process bypass button is the one right next to that. And it's kind of sitting in the middle. And that will allow you to basically turn off all the compression features or the whole reason you bought this to begin with. Uh, but it's great for sampling if you want to test what it sounds like without all of the compression and enhancements. Uh, and then you can turn it on. Or, uh, yeah, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you, if basically, if you bypass that, then you're not going to hear any of the settings that you have all the way to the right. It turns everything to the right off. So you can see they designed this really well. If you look at this uh, video here, there are boxes around each knob. And underneath each box, this outline right here, you're going to see what specifically those knobs will impact and the first set of knobs is for compression and so this is one I was very excited about to get compression added in so I didn't have to do it post production and the drive knob you have two knobs a drive knob and a density knob so the drive knob controls the amount of gain reduction as you turn the dial you'll increase the amount of applied gain turn it back to zero and you essentially bypass compression altogether and then your density knob controls the release time. For vocals, generally you want the slower release, so it removes any of the background noise. And you have a gain reduction meter there as well, which will go red um, when you have no further gain reduction basically available. So you can play with those settings and see what works best for you. You certainly don't want all of that those LEDs to go red unless maybe you're doing instrumental or, or something along those lines. Uh, for me, I like to keep it uh, within the first uh, one to three uh, LEDs there for the compression. So I have the drive set to about six and the density is pretty close to being off. Uh, and again, that controls the release time. So may have to do some adjustments with that, but we will see. The next is the de controls. So you've got a frequency knob, 4 to 8 kilohertz for vocals. Uh, it's generally best, so that's where you want to keep it at. And then you have a threshold knob, and I set this to low. Um, but you have two LEDs that light up between 1 decibel and 6 decibel thresholds here, which indicate the sibilance. So to remove prominent S's, Z and sh sounds, you can adjust this to your particular voice and speech. Generally, somewhere between 2 to 10 kilohertz is where the sibilance lies. Uh, so this is something where you're going to want to have Audacity up and your mic and just play with it until you can see uh, your vocal patterns and adjust it so that it can remove it the best. If you go too high, though, I did get some distortion in the audio, so just keep that in mind. And the next section we have is our enhancer. So we're here now. And you have LF detail or low frequency. So to control bass, if you want to add more bass boosting to your voice and high frequency for, you guess it, allowing you to control the high frequency ranges. So those are pretty simple. And again, you're going to want to play with those uh, on your own to determine what's best for you. I have LF set to 5 and the uh, HF set to around... 
and we are at the expander gate so this has a threshold knob and an expansion knob so the threshold knob this is to tell the unit when to allow the sound through so if you're in a noisy area where your computer is running you can set this to not open up for sounds less than you know x decibels whatever you want uh, that way it's only opening up when it's picking up signals above that point so this is very useful for vocal work specifically and if you have a computer or noisy things in the room, then you're certainly going to want to adjust that to compensate for the noise so that it's not kicking on your mic just while your computer is running. When you're completely silent, you should pretty much hear some silence and it shouldn't be opening up the mic. So expansion knob is the next knob next to it. This controls your audio expansion and you'll see a threshold LED to see when the sound is activated green. Uh, when you're talking and red when it's passing nothing through so again uh, the expansion knob uses a ratio so like a two to one three to one which works great so if you have a signal that's three decibels uh, below the threshold the signal level and you have your knob set to two to one this will reduce it by six decibels so lower level noise are reduced substantially so you can play with these uh, this section to really get the most out of reducing any of that computer background etc and then the output knob I have set to zero. It controls RMS level changes caused from the processing of all the other effects. Um, when I turn it up or anything, it just really over amplifies the gain. Um, so I'm not utilizing that at all. And so far, everything's been working good. Now I do have output set to medium on my Steinberg. So obviously I could uh, do the adjustment lower there and maybe raise it here if I wanted to and there is so much that you can do to make your voice even better this is my first run at these settings um, and I think it's getting very very good sound certainly better than just having the UR22 audio interface but there's certainly room for improvement here and I would love to hear from you guys and get some of your feedback and advice because I am not an expert in this area but I am having a lot of fun geeking out in it so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope this encourages you to start geeking out on audio. Let me know in your comments below if you have any questions. And until next time, fill your brains.